Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff McNaughton, Senior Director of Industry and Theatrical, as well as Programmer of Prime Time here at TIFF. I am thrilled to be able to present the international premiere of The Panthers, and I am so excited to be sitting down with creators Nua Finau, Tom Hearn, TIFF rising star Demetrius Schuster Kolomatung, and two of the original members of the Polynesian Panther Party, Malani Anai and Alex Tolafoa. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Kia ora, Jeff. Jeff, thanks for having us. Um, I, uh, I am so excited about this series. I've, I've told Nua and um, Tom already. Obviously, it's, it's why I've programmed it. And uh, it has this energy of rebellion that um, really is exciting. And I'm, I know not only Toronto audiences, but audiences around the world are really going to love it. And I, I wanted to really start with my first question for the two creators. I, I'd love to understand what really sparked and ignited the idea around the series. Yeah, so um, I'll jump in and get the ball rolling there. Um, uh, the, the idea actually started for me or my involvement about six years ago. Um, so it's been a long time kind of percolating um, and, and it's taken various sort of shapes and forms over those years with lots of different um, people contributing to the project. Um, but it really sort of took off, in my view, um, about 18 months ago, two years ago, when um, her life for Noah, with Noah and um, another colleague of ours, Crystal Vainga, joined the team. And we sort of found this new creative direction for the project. And that's since then, it's been unstoppable. Um, I, I've sort of found in my career that there's often like a time for a project. And when it's the time for it, the seas just pop and it steams ahead. And, and, and that's what it's been like for this project. And Nua, what really excited you when, when Tom first approached you about it? Oh, it was just such a cool story. Um, for me growing up in Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, I, I didn't know much about this part of our history in um, New Zealand, um, let alone about these cool um, young Polynesian radicals who just went out to change the world and fight for um, fight for what was right. So as soon as Tom um, hit me up and I jumped on Google and, and read some books and watched documentaries, I knew I was like, man, this is the one. This is the one that will, will make our stories cool, will make our stories, uh, make our voices heard and, and such a great outlet to tell a very significant part of our history um, here in New Zealand. And what were some of the variables um, in relation to the story when, you know, when more research was done that you really wanted to make sure you were getting right? Um, because it is such an important story and a tr and, and, and very much a true story um, that, I, uh, that deserve that kind of um, attention that, that you really give it. I think it's like um, it's it's a constant balance to try and get right whenever you're adapting a true story, um, because there's obviously the backbone of like of the historical factual aspects that you want to get right, but then also you're bringing your own, you know, as the audience will have seen from watching the show, your own kind of creative or artistic interpretation of that as well. So. Yeah, it's, it's a fine balance. And one, I think, for Noor and I, that's what I loved working in a partnership as well, as we would keep each other accountable as to what um, just felt right, I guess, and what felt like the integrity of the story. And we had a wider group. We had people like Alec and Milani who we could turn to and just check in with for guidance on those things as well. Um, but, yeah, it was quite a... Uh, I guess like paradoxical in that way where like there was a very careful sort of process in terms of the reverence around the importance of the material. But at the same time, at the other end of the scale, there was this rebellious spirit that we wanted to be bold and creative and like not feel tied into the true story in terms of what we were trying to express for the 2021 audience. And Melania and Alec, what did that mean to you to have Nua and, and Tom really uh, you know, coming to you for that insight to really, you know, understand that moment in time uh, in your lives. 
Well, we, um, we were very careful um, about coming into the project because we wanted the integrity of what we did as, as a group of 16 to 19 year olds in terms of changing the world as we knew it in Auckland, New Zealand. So we um, talked with um, Tom and immediately we felt um, that he was the right person um, to tell our story. Um, and so we were very confident that, um, that, that it would go forward and as with much sincerity and kind of um, honesty about the, the facts of our journey as much as it can be in the context of a movie, you know, uh, yes. I mean, a, a series of, um, um, just, uh, so yeah, we were, we, it was great and uh, the consultation was constant. So we really respected and admired um, the detail and, and the contact that they made sure they had during the whole process. Mm. And um, I'm making an assumption here, but I was going to ask both of you if you have both seen the, the finished product already. Um, well, that is, well, that is um, well, you can yep. speak to that. Yeah, I've seen it. I, I binged on it. I just had to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware of one of uh, Tom's comments that if you haven't watched this already uh, in the first two hours of it being released, he will disown us and we will no longer be part of his friendship list and we'll receive Christmas cards or any other benefits. So I try very, very hard to sit there in front of, um, of the TV and watch each episode. I haven't got quite got through all of it yet, but that's just me and TV. <laughs> well my my follow-up question to that I, I'm, I'm uh was what was it like for the for the first time seeing your story on screen um yeah uh well it's kind of hard to get used to uh and we we see these doppelgangers uh there and uh they're taking us back actually to a time in our lives that had everything in it the excitement the um the cut and thrust of rebellion and uh just just the time and it, it does actually seize the time very well uh, mm -hmm. it puts us puts us there and we, we have to even now even with a true story that yeah, the factual story in mind we're thinking did we really do that mm -hmm. And so when we see these things now on screen, we ask ourselves the same question: Did we really do that? <laughs> but but uh, I think you know these actors have really kind of uh, caught the got the spirit of it, um, and oh, it's just the, the ambience of the whole thing is quite amazing. And so, you know, uh, big congratulations to Will, Tom, and the uh, whole cast of um, of actors and and all the people that put into that to make it what it is um, is just a, quite amazing for us. Yes. I, I'd just like to say that the characterization of the characters is almost perfect. Yes. And that's what uh, impressed me, like, just down to a T, just took me right back yeah. to back in the day, you know, and um, so that showed me the care that um, Noah and Tom took in, in finding the right person so Demetrius was fantastic as well and yeah. all the characters actually in the Panthers uh, you know that was amazing to me because it was um so bang on in terms of um uh, our characters at the time mm. one of our one of our members having mm. watched that uh there was a scene where um uh it's it's uh, Cole who who's involved in an action uh, and this member, the outcome of that action was surprising to the member, and so they were asking us, did he really go to jail? Um, <laughs> <laughs> is that what happened to him after that? <laughs> I wonder no one saw him again. Um, uh, question, speaking of the development of characters, and obviously, you know, the creators are such an important role in that, but Demetrius, you know, I, I my next two questions are really for you, uh, my first question is, um, can you kind of talk us through the moment where you found out that you were going to star in this incredibly important series? 
Um, so I found out, I went to a little lunch with Tom, Noah, Crystal, and Journey. And, um, oh, and Lani as well, the, um, the, girl, the woman that plays Milani's character. And yeah, we were just having a little chat. And then um, right at the end, Noah wanted to drop a bomb and say, oh, yeah, you got the role. And then, and then they all left me after that. And I was like, oh. And then sort of went to my car, had a little cry, called my mum. And like, oh, I got the role. Yeah, I was just stuck there. I think I was like, it took me a second to realize, like, oh, the hard work actually starts now. So, like, <laughs> like yeah, had to pull myself together and, yeah, just got into it. Wow, the, the, your performance is fantastic. I, I remember watching just the first episode and um, you kind of practicing your speech um, and the, the empathy and, you know, all of those things in your character are really understood very quickly. And I think, you know, that gives credit to your performance, but also, you know, Tom and Nua. But one of the one of the follow up questions I wanted to ask is uh, connected to what Melanie was saying about authenticity. Did you have, you know, access to the, the original Panthers to talk about um, how to develop your character? Yes, yeah, so I had um, a lot of conversations with Will himself, um, Will you don't know here. So we had um, a couple sit downs here and there, just um, talking through his character. Um, I talked to like a lot of people who knew him during that time as well, because um, you know Will can have an image of himself that you know he wants to play, but sort of just getting like a broader picture of what you know other people saw him as um, was also good to good to get. But yeah, and we always had um, you know all the OG Panthers on set as well, like Milan and Alec would always be walking around. Will would be there as well, and couple of other um, group members, so yeah, it was always good to chat to them just to get a fair idea, not just of my character, but just of the world itself that we're in, um, you know, that we were trying to portray, and um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it, you kind of touch on this, and, and this is a follow-up question to Tom and Nua, but what was the kind of energy that you wanted to create in on set, in production, to create this kind of space for collaboration between you know the directors the the performers and the original uh panthers who might be there on a given day well you good i think i think for us because it was such a big part of our history um and and a big and and kind of the first um polynesian drama to be to be on as made as a series here in new zealand it was very important for us to to set kind of um, a Polynesian culture from the top to the bottom and behind and in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a very like family, family buzz that we wanted to, to make. So there was no Tom and Noor are the big boss producers um, and Demetrius is the lead actor and no one look him in the eyes, that kind of, that kind of stuff. It was, so it was very much, we're all, we're all one, we're all in the same, um, Vaka, and we're all going to the same destination. So it very much was um, anchored in a in a Polynesian kind of um, spirit that we made it in. That, that's what I feel like we did, which was based around respect, um, teamwork, um, honouring each other, honouring the story. And when the, the when our OG Panthers were on set, it, it just solidified to us what we were doing. It was kind of every time, every time they'd come and they'd, they'd, they'd see the set or they'd see the actors, um, it was just kind of a good point, a check point for us to know that what we were doing was was right, we're heading in the right direction because they did they did let us know every now and then if what we were doing was, was a bit too creative. <laughs> I, I even felt that when um, we, we jumped on a call to talk about bringing the series to TIFF and you know, even in that smallest moment, I felt like you were welcoming me into that family in, in a big way and in that journey, and, and it and it melt, meant a lot. Yeah, that's awesome, Jeff. No, it's um, yeah, for me, like it's been a unique experience in that way across my career, um, and definitely the most um, enjoyable experience of my career working on this project. And just as Noah, very um, beautifully articulated like there really was uh, 
a family spirit and we tried to cultivate that in the way that we went through our processes you know like filmmaking actually can be a bizarrely kind of hierarchical sort of almost military type um way of working and often that is counter to the sensitivity and openness that i think we need to have as storytellers um so for example every morning we would start with Akia or prayer with our full um, group who would come together. Um, we definitely always tried to have, as Noah was talking about, like a pretty open door policy where anyone could come to us if there were anything that they wanted to bring as a creative idea or as um, as an issue that they wanted to raise. So it did make it slightly more challenging at times um, as a process because it's not as like militant and sort of boxed in. Um, but I think it also served the work because it made it meant that we were all open to new ideas coming in, um, either from other team members or you know from from the environment. So yeah, it was awesome. And Alex, uh, Alec mentioned earlier that you know the energy of the series in relation to that moment it really brought you back um, to that feeling of you know your youth. Um, and I and a question for Tom and Nua in terms of the distinct look and feel of the series. Can you talk about some of your stylistic influences in telling this story? Well, uh, we had uh, for for style. That was one of the first um, hires we made. Was our our costume designer is a Nguyen Samoan boy from Central Auckland. Um, his name is Sammy Salsa. Mm -hmm. um, I'm nowhere near as cool with my dressing dress sense. Um, the Panthers, when we looked at photos of them in the 70s, they looked real cool. So Sammy was the perfect fit. And I didn't really, to be honest, I can't claim any of that creator's input because I was just like, my brief, our brief to Sammy was, when people watch the show on Sunday, we want young people to be wearing those clothes in the weekend when they go out. Um, that's, that was our brief to him. And he pretty much took that ran with it. He sent me a DM the other day of uh, a friend of his that said his daughter wants to go dressed as a panther to their school board, which I think is their prom, the equivalent of a prom. Um, so when I saw that message, I was like, man, we did it. We landed. <laughs> and Demetrius, how did it feel putting on your costume for the first time? Did it help you get into the performance? Um, if I'm being honest, the first time was a bit tricky because um, the clothes are quite tight. Um, so it was a bit tricky to sort of, yeah, um, just get used to the clothes. But um, as the scene, like, as um, I guess shooting went on and um, yeah, everything sort of just started to feel like I was Will. Um, just straight from wearing his you know, leather jacket to putting on the beret, it was like, okay, yeah. I'm Is that why you took your um, top off all the time, Docs? <laughs> I won't lie, when I was choosing my wardrobe for this interview, I was thinking I have to step up my game in terms of look because, new. I've seen some interviews with you where you've got the Jordan, you know, Bulls jersey on and, and you know, everyone's just – you're coming with some with some strong style. I feel like it's hard to keep up. <laughs> um, my my next question um, um, is, you know, several weeks ago, after many long years of campaigning, the New Zealand government issued a formal apology for the Don raids, um, which um, is an important first step in the truth and reconciliation process. But I, I wanted to ask. Um, Melanie and, and Alec, how do you see this uh, process moving forward from here? Well, uh, first of all, we want to just appreciate that uh, the government has taken responsibility for its behavior during that period. Uh, and that finally, there is some justice that has come to that part of our history. Uh, and so that's, that's important. And there are the therapeutic the healing effects of that action are already already um, fully in evidence with stories uh, being released and people feeling free enough to be able to share those those stories uh, but what we're looking for now is uh, a um, changes in the school curriculum um, that would 
in the in the long term bring about uh, changes to how people think about racism, changes to, to how people think about difference, ethnic difference in particular. And we feel that uh, those changes need to happen if indeed we're serious about dismantling racism here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And if the curriculum, uh, which is the diet of every child that goes to school here, included things like um, the dawn raids and studies on racism, then perhaps you would start to see a dismantling of that or certainly better attitudes uh, that would go to create a better world than the one that we grew up in. Yeah. And so we're still plumbing for that. And as you mentioned earlier, it is a very first step. It's an important first step, but there has to be other stuff that comes, that follows on from that. And we'll be certainly at the table again hammering on the table asking for these sorts of things and still making change in the 21st century yeah. I, I think if, if you can sum it up it's all about educate to liberate which has been our main platform yes. for, for 50 years now yeah. where we're still engaged in that campaign in whatever careers that we're doing the work we're doing and, and so the educate to liberate program that we have in schools has touched and revolutionized thousands of young school students who are starting to ask questions about racism, starting to wanting to know more about this history which has been hidden in their school books for all these years. And so um, it's an exciting time for us, but first we need to heal in terms of our communities, the pain and the, and the trauma that they've been through, yeah. and it's intergenerational. So, um, but the time is coming. Kafafai tonu matau means we will still keep up the fight to educate, to liberate as much as we can. And I think I think this uh, this the Panther series has has opened up conversations about that all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an important series uh, and an important message uh, from the time, and it's relevant today as well. Yeah, and I I think one of the reasons why um, it has impacted me as a Canadian is because those conversations. Uh, you know, in dark periods in Canadians past in relation to um, indigenous rights has um, been an important subject matter that, um, yeah, that uh, we are, that there's many people, you know, across Canada, uh, indigenous people across Canada that are looking for that same healing and um, are having a hard time finding it um, due to the decisions of um, our government. Yes. Um, and I guess that um, brings me to my last question, and it's really open to kind of um, anyone to answer. Um, but what does it mean to you to see more narrative sovereignty and storytelling from Indigenous creators and talent? Um, and what more needs to be done by systems of influence, not just in New Zealand? But in other parts of the world, um, to to create more of that content so that those stories, from an educational perspective, are seen and heard. I think from from kind of the first part of that that question, um, it was just evident from day one when we had our cast and and crew and extras and stuff coming on set and seeing kind of how we were and who we were and Alec and, and Milani were on set that day as well for day one um, and setting up their karakia and then when like you could see the young Polynesians faces seeing Milani, Alec, Will on set but then when it was clicking in their heads that it was us that were the producers, the writers that it looked like them, the people that were behind the camera looked and talked like them, you could just see a different level of um, a different light, a different glow from within because both Tom and I are, have been in front of the camera as actors and, and, and me coming up, I never saw anyone like me, a Polynesian behind the camera um, or, or a producer. So for, for me, it was a real like, man, we've, we've come a long way just in my time. Um, so I think that, that gave us a different energy 
in just terms of the storytelling. And Tom and I, from the get-go, in terms of the sovereignty, have set that out from the very beginning was this is a partnership. It is a 50-50 um, partnership that we, we set ourselves on. And the picture behind Tom actually is our tawake, which is a, a symbol, a bird, that um, is synonymous throughout the Pacific, navigators. It's a guide um, that our navigators would use to find new lands or find um, their way back home. Um, you'll see it in the Disney Warner show, but for us, it's like an angel, it's a guide, it's a friend. It is people like Alec and Lani that we followed um, when telling our story. And I think it's just that approach, that kind of more um, indigenous approach to storytelling, like Taika said in his um, speech, they were the original storytellers. Um, so instead of us looking down at our paper and our books and uh, we burnt the map and we looked to the stars and we just followed where where the energy is where the good lord or, or the, the energy took us um whether that was from our producer's assistant who helped us write the last scene of the series or just conversation at lunch with our caterer you know everyone it was being open and, and it did present some challenges but it was it was it's just a different form of working um, and getting rid of those set ways of, of approaching work and it is just everyone a, a village mentality like it takes a village to raise a child it takes a village to make something as mean as the Panthers <laughs> I, I think for me it, it was an instance of the browning of filmmaking you know it was the browning of filmmaking and it was like um uh, not unlike other Browning instances that's happening in Aotearoa in terms of um, coming into our own, in terms of who we are and as our an identity. But people, we've talked about how it was like a family on set and right through the whole process. But within that family, there was this sense of uh, uh, intense spirituality. You know, the spirituality that we all shared when we came on the set as we started the day, you know, saying the prayer and the karakia. And you could feel it, you know, on the set and watching the young actors, even when they weren't in front of the camera, the way they behaved off the camera, you know, as a unit. It was just really warming to see that and to experience it, the days that we did see come on the set. Yeah. Well, I think that um, what uh, Te Wake, Four Nights, Tom Hearn and Lua, uh, I look at it in terms of a phase of, of a journey and uh, these these guys and they've kind of uh, left the safety of the reef and they've lost sight of land, the things that provide the comfort and the security and they've gone out into the deep blue and it's the deep blue of the world that they live in every day still trying to uh, make change in a, what is pretty much an institution um, where there are um, commercial, commercial concerns to navigate around uh, as well as structural things within the, uh, the, the, the companies that, that, that are interested in the movie and how they would like to see that movie scripted, etc. So these are still challenges that, that we are facing uh, uh, across the board in other areas um, of just specific people trying to get their stories told, uh, trying to get past the Disney versions of our stories and claiming, claiming our stories and telling them our way. There's still a way to go until that is a day-to-day uh, where people can accept that as a day-to-day -day thing and not have to question it or, or wonder why he want to do this. So I, I, you know, I, I think that what Tom and Nua are doing, and I guess other other storytellers, uh, Pacific storytellers, they are still challenging the power, still challenging the power to, to go beyond the Disney versions of our stories uh, and to tell our stories um, our way. Uh, and, and we're always having to challenge the Western paradigm of doing things uh, in order for us to, to get our stories told. Often we have to concur with or, or, or meet the, the, uh, the Western paradigm 
uh, in order for our stories to be told. But we don't operate on that paradigm, as you've heard. You know, what, what other uh, production do you go to where you have a, a prayer in the morning? Uh, I don't think that happens on too many sets. Um, so, you know, that just the, the indigeneity of it, indigenizing our stories is, is a just a wonderful thing and, and that's what we see uh, in this project is that they are still speaking to the power in this way still talking to the studios and, and challenging the commercial interests of the, the integrity of the story etc so these guys are they're pretty pretty mean warriors out there for our stories well i um the the analogy of going into the deep blue and being warriors in that journey i i just wanted to say how grateful i am and tiff is to be a part of this journey that we are you know someone you've met uh, along that journey into the deep blue and as i mentioned off the top we are so proud and honored to have the the international premiere of the panthers at tiff and so thank you for letting us be a part of it I love it. Honor, Jeff. 